Gaming news with Ars Technica's Sam Moscovich. Yahoo has $10 million riding on a football game and drones that catch cheaters. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 351 for Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Dropbox for Business. Dropbox for Business lets your team sync and share files just like Dropbox, but with IT admin tools that allow you to control and protect your company information. Visit dropbox.com slash twit for a free 14-day trial. That's dropbox.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney, and joining me today to talk tech culture news is Sam Moscovich, reporter for Ars Technica. Welcome, Sam. How's it going? It's going good. Thanks for coming on. Let's start with the big story you wrote about about the deal that Yahoo announced to stream one regular one regular season NFL game across the globe for free, free to us, but not to Yahoo, who you report paid over $10 million for the rights. Which game is this, and how can we watch it? It's going to be the riveting match between the Buffalo Bills and Jacksonville Jaguars. As ever, uh, this is one of the, the NFL's one game in London per year as they try to broaden the league's international appeal. Uh, and they had announced in March uh, that they were going to do this, but they hadn't announced who was going to screen it or what the cost was going to be. And Yahoo this morning announced the partnership that they would go ahead and screen this for free for everyone across uh, the globe. And that's going to be in October. Uh, it's going to be at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time in the States, which will be more convenient for London viewers, and also, as some reports stated, out in Moscow and even Japan. So free, but there will be ads, I presume? There will absolutely be ads, uh, and there are going to be ads that are baked into Yahoo's various apps, uh, Yahoo Screen, Yahoo Sports. Uh, they mentioned something about Tumblr being involved, so maybe they're going to GIF or GIF the game, however you'd like to say that somehow. <laughs> but yeah. So this Definitely is adds. this is kind of part of what we've been hearing a lot about the Marissa Meyer uh, Yahoo. Like she really wants to promote mobile and is really working on the advertising deals. This is something that's going along with all that, right? Yeah, I, th I think she's pushing very hard for video. Uh, I know there had been reports about uh, ad sales being attached uh, to other projects and the numbers just haven't been so hot. So right now I think it's the big ticket video stuff that I think they're going to be staking a lot of their reputation on especially after their deal with Katie Couric and her new show. And additionally, Community, whose a season just wrapped, they're trying to get more pro original programming together. Uh, whether that's really going to work or not uh, is beyond me. I know just from my end, every time I tune into a Yahoo stream on any of my computers, I don't use Adblock or anything, and I never see ads. So I'm not quite sure how they're making money, why they spend money, but uh, your guess is as good as mine. I know that the report said... For this deal, they didn't just pay $10 million, they paid an eight-figure amount as the report. So it could be up to $99 million as far as we know. They're, uh -huh. they're throwing a lot of money for just one game to be broadcast around the world to get their name attached to it. And it's an exclusive deal, right? No one else can stream it or show it on any stations. The only stations that get to air it, as with uh, other London games, are the local affiliates in Buffalo and Jacksonville. Uh, other than that, there's going to be no cable, there's going to be no dish, especially... If you have DirecTV Sunday Ticket, for example, you are not going to be able to watch. You will have to, at that point, find either a smart TV app or a set-top uh, box app or your mobile app in order to watch it on a TV. So your article implied that there were a lot, some other companies competing for this. Do you have any idea or any guesses as to who else might have been trying to get this deal? Uh, the few people had, uh, the NFL had set, said specifically that Google... Apple and Amazon that they had talked to them. I'm not sure whether NFL went to them and said, hey, let's do this, or the other sides actually were active. But what other reports were saying was that the people who were turned down specifically wanted to have a pay-per-view sort of thing, where they, you would have to pay, no matter where you were in the world, uh, a certain amount in order to watch. Uh, and the NFL was apparently not interested in that. They wanted someone who was willing to eat some cost and let everybody around the world watch for free. Because remember, the last time this, the NFL film screened anything online, that was uh, the last Super Bowl. And that cost $10 per view if you were anywhere but the United States or Mexico. Right. So in the U.S. you got and Mexico, you got to watch it for free. But those other places, it was not. I guess maybe that wasn't so successful for them. I, I mean, that's that. there's no telling. I, I think at that point, uh, 
it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens with us. I know they're going to absolutely watch this data like hounds and see what it really does. I know they've actually already said that they're going to have another announcement about whatever social media uh, partner will be because the NFL needs a social media partner in order to talk about uh, what's happening online. So I'm sure that that announcement will trickle out soon enough and we'll know where they're going to throw their obnoxious hashtags and emoji to talk about this upcoming game. Right. So let's move on to another exclusive deal. You've got a chance to try out Gamefly Streaming. It's a new video subscription service that's only available on Amazon Fire TV. What did you think? Well, I've tried a few of these services. Uh, there's been more that have been cooking up and actually been available uh, since OnLive launched years ago. And OnLive was absolutely too soon to the market. Now we have services like NVIDIA Grid, PlayStation Now, and now this, uh, which is Gamefly Streaming. Uh, and it was actually a, a service called Playcast that was started in Israel and launched uh, in other smaller markets around the world. Uh, and this is their first dip into the American market. Uh, I was able to hook up uh, my Amazon Fire TV, which I had to blow a giant layer of dust off of since I never <laughs> otherwise use the thing, uh, and hook that up and load the app. Uh, at first, even though I'm on uh, gigabit with a five gigahertz uh, router, it said, please plug in your ethernet cable. You need as much uh, bandwidth as you can get. I did so. Uh, it told me that the bandwidth wasn't very good. It said eight uh, megabits per second, uh, which is way lower than, than my normal speed, certainly lower than an ideal Netflix speed. I believe it's 20 megabits a second for uh, a, an ideal smooth Netflix stream. And it was slow and uh, artifacty, I think is the word you use. When you, when you look at the image and it's got these extra sort of compression-y blocks that you wouldn't otherwise expect from the native signal. Um, they have, it's, it's a, I, I, I can sort of go in every direction. There's, there's issues with the number of games, there's issues with the connection, there's in, issues with latency. Um, it's certainly uh, the beginning of something that could get better, but they didn't start hot. Right, and they're, they're game packs you wrote about. They, they have to be, you have to subscribe to them individually. How does that work? That's right, I didn't even mention that part, which is that you can't either pay for a flat fee for all the games, and you can't pay a la carte per game. Instead, what they want you to do is pay $7 a pop for access to seven games uh, that are all grouped by genre. They have a Lego pack, they have an adventure pack, they have a, a speed pack, which is racing with a little bit of flying mixed in. Um, and then they have one more that's $10 that gets you 16 games, which is sort of a mishmash of all the various ones. Uh, and the games that are in each of the packs are not brand spanking new. These are games that have been on some of the other streaming services already. They're two to three years old on average. Uh, they're not pushing the, the PC envelope and they're the kind that you wait for these days to be on a cheap Steam sale if you're a PC gamer. But they've all been, all the ones that are released have controller compatibility in common. None of these require a keyboard or mouse. So if you have the Amazon Fire TV controller or a similar Bluetooth or even a wired Xbox controller, you can immediately start playing with the buttons you're comfortable with, which is, I suppose, the one thing that I would compliment about it. So yeah, that's the one thing. <laughs> Otherwise, not, not really a fan. Otherwise, not ready for prime time. The biggest issue with these uh, streaming ones is that you're not playing at the house. You're sending every button tap uh, all the way down uh, to their server and then waiting for that to come back for the update and back and forth. Uh, and the average Comcast or Time Warner cable customer is already going to have uh, quite a bit of lag, more than I had as a really, really high-speed user. So if I can't get something where I tap the button and it happens immediately, I can't imagine what it's like for someone who's paying the average $30 to $60 a month for internet speed. Basically, I'm playing as Pac-Man. I'm trying to turn a corner. It's a pretty simple game, and it can't even hold up. I'm still getting these little... Uh, pauses and delays, just like my voice just now. And that doesn't really help when you're trying to get a lot of power pellets. Right. So you also had a chance to spend some quality time with Splatoon, Nintendo's new and first online multiplayer game, finally. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on Splatoon? That's right. Splatoon? I actually uh, just grabbed the little uh, uh, overpriced, or well, not overpriced, but collectible <laughs> toy right here. This is uh, the Splatoon boy who... Uh, if you can't tell he's a squid and a human at the same time, uh, this is a Nintendo after all. Uh, this is, uh, Nintendo has had a couple of online shooter uh, moments in the past, but it's been a long time. In 2006, 
they had a couple for the Nintendo DS. That takes us way back. But otherwise, this is their first game that's purely specifically designed with multiplayer first. Um, and it has a lot going for it. It is a beautiful, cartoony game, much as you would expect from something made by Nintendo. It's a brand new IP, which is nice for a company that basically... You, you'd almost expect this to be called Mario Paintball, the way that they like to take their old characters and slap them into sort of new ideas. Um, and it's fun for... I would say if I wanted to hand a shooting game to a teenager... Uh, or younger, you know, when people come to me and say, what's a good shooting game for my kid? I would throw this at them because it's both um, fun and not really controversial. You know, the, you, you just end up with a compromise when you're in a situation like that. And this, I don't think, necessarily compromises that. Uh, where I come from, as someone who's got access to all kinds of online shooters, I look at it and I say, Nintendo's had, you know, time before entering the market. Have they come here to take risks and do crazy things, or have they come to look a little inexperienced and green. And it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, you've, you've got uh, a game that lets you do a lot of crazy, as you can see in this video, a lot of gliding around in this paint water. You turn from a kid to a squid, and you do this swimming around as you're trying to coat the ground in paint. Whichever team has more paint on the ground at the end of a match wins. And it's the swimming that's really exciting. Um, there's a lot of these shooting games where you just kind of hide behind a car that just happens to be in the middle of a battlefield that you can perfectly hide beneath. And I've always found that sort of weird. And this more naturally, naturally as much as you can being a squid in paint, swim around. You go really fast. You can sneak up on people. You can hide in your color. It's a really, really cool mechanic. Uh, but, but the problem is, is that Nintendo's messed up a couple of things that I think long-time shooting fans are going to stumble over. Uh, the weapons don't feel that distinct from each other. They're, some of them just simply are weaker or slower versions that don't offer really nice trade-offs that you'd expect from a complex shooter. You end up basically finding the best weapon and sticking to it. And that's been the case even after the game's first patch that uh, came out a few days ago. And the other issue is that the, the connectivity can just be wonky. Um, I find, as the retail game has come out, that when I shoot at another person, it just doesn't always register, or I'll get this weird two to three second delay saying that I have shot them, uh, not dead, but passed out, as they do in Nintendo games. Um, <laughs> so I, there's, and there's other issues I talked about. I could go on because it's a lot of wonky, nitty gritty stuff. But when you've been playing online shooters for so long and Nintendo finally shows up with one, you hope that they would have paid attention to some of the things about matchmaking with friends, about uh, weapon selection, about having a certain amount to do when the game first launches. Uh, but the game came out with not enough content uh, and not enough professional treatment of how we want to play an online game. Mm. And how much will this one cost you? This is out right now for $60. And what, instead of, as far as I know, they're not going to sell any add-on packs. Instead, they're releasing add-ons month by month uh, for a game that only has right now six arenas to fight in, which is pretty small for a game like this. Uh, and only two modes, which is incredibly small for a game that after just about a couple hours, these modes do get a little repetitive. They're solid, but there's not kind of the variety or diversity that you would hope for uh, in a genre like online shooting. Right. Certainly cleaner than real paintball, though. Oh, absolutely. I, I've actually done pretty well, and I can't even handle the recoil of a paintball gun, let alone the welts. Yeah, so, they, uh, they you hurt. Know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a bad game at all. I've enjoyed my time with it, but yeah, I I have really high hopes, and this I would say that it was kind of didn't quite meet the bar. Mm. But uh, I, who knows how Nintendo's uh, propensity to not update games that well, to not respond to requests for online patches in big ways, um, that's only been corrected by Smash Brothers recently, uh, where they've done a few patches to balance characters and things like that. So they could turn around and look at some of the very simple fixes that could be done, especially about making uh, games with friends. Right now, if you want to play a game with a buddy, you have to call them. You have to coordinate when you both log on at the same time to guarantee that you'll be in the same match. And that's just with one friend, let alone with the three friends you'd need for a full team. It's, it's a 2004 treatment of something that has been done way better now in 2015. Right. So now you have your full reviews at Ars Technica, both of those games. Here's something you haven't written about yet. I wanted to talk about it because I'm 
a fan of all forms of apocalypse entertainment. I was very excited about the new trailer for Fallout 4. It came out today. Uh, here we're looking at it. Um, there's a dog. There seems to be a dog in most video games. Uh, I also noticed that Veronica Belmont tweeted first thing when it came out that she wanted someone to find a, a skin for her own dog that she could put on the Fallout dog. So if anyone's into <laughs> that, they should help Veronica out. Uh, so are you a Fallout fan? I am, yes. And when I saw this, I wasn't shocked at all. Uh, this is the first time that the company who's making this, Bethesda, uh, has actually announced their own press conference coming up at this big E3 conference in a couple of weeks in Los Angeles. Uh, so the fact that they went to that sort of trouble, everyone who'd heard about that figured if it wasn't Fallout, what the heck could it be? Uh, so there had been a lot of rumblings, uh, and they even had a, a, a countdown about 24 hours before this video launched letting everyone know, please stand by with a uh, graphic that looks just like something out of Fallout. Uh, that being said, uh, it's always a delight to see the, the Fallout team come forward with something. And it's nice to get something that shows real gameplay, shows expansive scope, and says by the end of 2015. Uh, this is not some incredibly uh, out there, maybe it'll come out, maybe it won't game. Uh, which has been an issue with Bethesda with games by id Software. Uh, in fact, they had a game called Prey 2, which was very ambitious a few years ago that just completely disappeared. So they've come forward with a Fallout trailer that lets us know we are going to play this. We are going to go to post-apocalyptic Boston, which looks really cool. You've got the Paul Revere statue popping up in this weird thunder and lightning scene. You see it shimmer and shake. You see uh, the Massachusetts State House, somebody said, is in there. I've only been to Boston twice, so I can only tell you so much. But it looks it looks big. Uh, uh, there's already people complaining that it doesn't look good enough. Uh, so course. you know the internet doesn't wait uh, to respond to two minutes of footage before letting you know exactly how the game will look in the end. But I think we're going to have a lot more uh, time with it at the E3 conference in Los Angeles in a couple of weeks. And I'm absolutely looking forward to anything I can see, let alone play. Will you be at E3? I will be there. Uh, we've got a bunch of folks from Ars Technica flying down to LA. We're going to be uh, live streaming, I'm sorry, uh, live blogging every single conference, every major uh, press conference from the likes of uh, Sony, Microsoft, Square Enix, Bethesda, as we're talking about now. Uh, and then we'll be on the ground floor. There's actually going to be uh, an interesting mix of AAA and indie games at this year's E3, which is really exciting. There's a lot of developers who are... I, I think they're going to go guerrilla style. They're going to show up with their laptops, hang out in the hallways so they don't have to buy the badge. And uh, so that's going to be, you know, among the glitz and the glamour of the giant screens and the virtual reality headsets that we're all expecting. So we'll be there in full force. It should be a blast. Excellent. Well, I know uh, you'll probably be busy, but we might try to track you down and see if we can do some interviews to get your take on on the news at E3. Thank you so much for coming on, Absolutely. Sam. Sam, Max. Next Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. You were, you were saying my name correctly. I was so excited. <laughs> okay. Sam Moskovi Moskovich. Now you've got it. It's Moskovich, right? Yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> now you jinxed me. I got it the first few times. <laughs> Sam Moskovich. Okay. He's a reporter for Ars Technica. Where else can people find your work? Uh, as of lately, Ars Technica has uh, been soaking up my time. It's been wonderful. So, or Sam read at Twitter, just like it says. Does it say that right there? It does yeah. say that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that, that's easier to spell or pronounce than my last name. And otherwise, uh, I look forward to talking to you guys again. This is my first time. I've had a nice time. Thanks. Oh, great. Thanks, Sam. Take care. <laughs> Coming up, a cell phone hating high school teacher gets suspended, and I want my Apple TV. But first, at Twit, we've been using Dropbox to sync and share files for a long time. It's been a great solution for us. Now there's an even better solution, and we don't even have to learn how to use it because it's Dropbox for business. Dropbox for Business is the better way to manage accounts, manage billing, and have visibility and control over your data. Dropbox for Business lets you do just that, and you don't have to waste time finding a different solution. So what is Dropbox for Business? It's the same easy Dropbox experience your employees already love and trust. That means less training and more productivity, simple storage and sharing for any type of file on any platform and any device. Dropbox for Business never runs out of space. Each user starts off with one terabyte. It's very easy to expand beyond that. Staff can collaborate with team members, securely invite and control access to outside partners, clients, and vendors. And most importantly, for IT professionals, you have control. Dropbox for Business has powerful admin controls like remote wipe, intuitive sharing, and permission controls, plus complete 
audit logs. That way IT can make sure only the right people get access to the sensitive company data. Dropbox for Business integrates with third-party security and administration solutions. And last but not least, the robust Dropbox for Business infrastructure uses encryption for file data in transit and at rest plus segmentation and hashing to anonymize files. Extra security features are available like single sign-on and two-step verification. If you want to give it a try, take advantage of your employees' familiarity with Dropbox and sign up with for Dropbox for Business. Visit dropbox.com slash twit for a free 14-day trial of Dropbox for Business. That's dropbox.com slash twit. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The New York Times reports that Apple will not announce new hardware for the Apple TV at the Worldwide Developers Conference next week. We've been hearing rumors for a few months that we get word of a new Apple TV, but according to sources, the product is not quite ready. What is ready, again, according to the New York Times, is a new toolkit for Apple Watch software developers to create better apps with more access to the watch's heart rate and motion sensors, as well as some of the other components. Yahoo Tech pointed us to a story from a local news station in Florida about a high school science teacher who was suspended for five days for using a cell phone jammer to disrupt the cell phone communication in his classroom. The teacher says he was just trying to get his students to put down their phones and pay attention. And he says he researched cell phone jammers on the internet. He used Amazon and YouTube, he said, and he had no idea that they were illegal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know who you talk to, but they are illegal. Yahoo Tech says the FCC can fine someone thousands of dollars just for using a cell phone jammer. Venture capitalist and longtime Twitter investor Chris Saka made news today with the 8,500-word blog post advising Twitter on several paths they could take toward a better future. Speaking on CNBC today, Saka also said he thought Google should buy Twitter. It would be, quote, a fantastic use of Google's cash. What do you think? Should Google buy Twitter? Let me know on Twitter at Megan Maroney or in my Google mail at Megan at twit.tv. And finally, students take note next time you think about cheating on a test, don't. Why? Because you won't learn anything. And also because a drone might be watching you cheat. China's national higher education entrance exam is so difficult that students often go use various high-tech gear to cheat by wirelessly transmitting questions and then receiving the correct answers via an earpiece. And Gadget says, there's some of the devices they've used uh, to get their answers. And Gadget says that China is cracking down on the cheating with a drone that monitors radio activity. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. If you like the show, you can choose your favorite way to subscribe at twit.tv slash TN2. You can leave a comment on iTunes or YouTube or wherever anyone will let you leave a comment. Tell your neighbors. Who knows? They might accept a comment from you. Let us know what you like. Are you interested in hearing from a particular guest? Let us know about that. You can let me know directly by tweeting to at Megan Maroney or emailing TN2 at twit.tv. And if you're available at 4 p.m. Pacific, you can watch live at live.twit.tv and you can join our chat room. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, hosted by Mike Elgin every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney, and thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.